Stop wasting time spending hours reviewing a 40 question block. Get rid of the FOMO or fear of missing out mentality when studying. Understanding and remembering information for long periods of time requires repetition. It does not depend on reading into every single detail and going down rabbit holes for everything surrounding a particular question. Let's not go chasing for rabbits. Many question banks out there are jam packed with their explanations, which are usually very lengthy and trap students into spending 10 to 20 minutes reviewing a single question causing massive sidetracks in study. Bob over there has been stuck on question one since the beginning of time. Let's not be Bob. Our questions have concise and clinical explanations to prevent this, but still, you have to become efficient in reviewing. Learn three easy steps in this video and become a master on reviewing USMLE style questions. Learning these three steps will allow you to efficiently review any medical school question and extract the most important pieces of information effectively. Step one, figure out the main specific topic of the question. Taking a look at question 59 here, you know, the question says, which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Let's say you miss this question, you're reading it through. You automatically know that it's an endocrine question, but that's not good enough. You have to be specific with the topic that you want to review later. So in specific terms, this is going to be a endocrine thyroid cancer question. This is highly important because when you're figuring out what you need to study later, the recurrent themes or topics that you're missing on questions, then you can focus your content review either in first aid or pathoma dealing with, in this particular example, endocrine section, thyroid cancers, not the whole endocrine section. That's just too much to cover. It's not specific. You're not tackling the topics that you're weak in. Step two, where is your misstep in logic that got you to the wrong answer choice? Was it thinking of the wrong diagnosis? Was it banking on a buzzword slash keyword? Was it a misread? Was it not knowing a risk factor or association? So let's kind of take a look back at our thyroid question 59 example, right? Done a little bit of highlighting already, okay? And let's say you chose follicular adenoma, okay? You gotta be asking yourself with this question. All right, so you have a 45 year old female, painless lump in her neck, thyroid nodule reveals small uniform round nuclei and scant cytoplasms, surgical resection shows capsular and vascular invasion, and then you chose follicular adenoma. So did you think that the symptoms were more benign? Is that why you chose follicular adenoma? Then you have to kind of fix that train of thought and saying, oh, there's capsular and vascular invasion, so that's more malignant. Or was it, oh, you kind of thought small uniform round nuclei with scant cytoplasm was more benign, which is why you chose follicular adenoma. So then you want to correct your path result, right? That fits more with follicular adenoma. So you're troubleshooting. It is important you figure out exactly where in your logic you went wrong to fix your thought process and improve your overall question strategies. This is so important. This will significantly increase your chances of not only getting the particular question you're receiving correct, but also all questions of the same type. So question types such as diagnosis questions, treatment questions, mechanism questions, right? These are only to name a few to categorize in your head, but mastering question strategies is such a huge thing in taking the USMLE step one, step two, and also step three. All right, step three, last but not least, why is the correct answer the correct answer choice? This is so important because understanding how the question fits that last piece of the puzzle is important. It allows you to see the question as a whole and relate it directly to the answer of the question, of course. And a lot of the times the explanation will help you review this portion quickly. But taking a look back at our example of question 59. So, you know, you review kind of where you went wrong in the thought process. Right? Now you want to put it together and say, okay, so why is the answer follicular thyroid carcinoma? Explanation, right? Saying that, you know, you have an FNA showing small uniform round nuclei with scant nuclei, uh, cytoplasm. And then obviously after you did the resection, it shows that it is kind of invading the capsule and have vascular invasion, which supports more of a malignant and of course supports follicular thyroid carcinoma. So this makes sense for this question. You put it all together and that's all three steps. Do these three steps on every question missed. It will cut down your review sessions per block. This method will allow you to review a 40 question block in one hour or less. I always say to my students, you want a one-to-one -one ratio of doing a block and then reviewing it. It should take you the same amount of time or less
to review a block compared to how long it took you to initially do that same question block. Do not get in the trap of having study FOMO. Remember Bob over here? Do not have FOMO. You will see this information again, whether in another question, the textbooks you're reading, or by notes you have written and reviewed. Do not read every single explanation for every other answer choice. This will slow you down and make you highly inefficient at reviewing a question block. Happy studying and conquer missed questions efficiently.